sing a little louder. Oh, we're going to start out kind of low. Going to sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Going to sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Come on, Trent. Going to sing a little louder. Sing a little louder. Going to sing a little louder. Come into God's presence, we honor him, we worship him, we sing with all of our heart. But sometimes it becomes, um, uh, what do you call it, a mundane, I don't want to use that word, we get in a, we just, we go through the motions. Sometimes it just becomes, a, you know, a, an activity instead of a heartfelt worship, instead of really coming before the Lord and giving him the praises due his name. Musicians as worshipers. 
couple times through and if you need to close your eyes, that's okay too.
Morning, morning, morning. How was the breakfast on Saturday? I didn't get a chance to be there. Uh, yeah, that's because you were in like some high mountain resort yeah, somewhere, weren't you? Vacation was <laughs> <laughs> well, Tehachapi is nice this time of year. It is beautiful this time of year. It's not, it's yeah. <laughs> uh, breakfast was awesome. It was, you know, it always happens on Pioneer Day. So, so that kept some of the, uh, the barricades. They changed the barricades on us. Oh. So, yeah. so some guys had to navigate, but that's we had a great time. Uh, we fellowship. We passed the mic around. We heard Trent sing. We did. We did, and it was outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes, and it was fantastic. Yeah. So, hey, good morning, you guys. It's beautiful to be here. The, the seasons are continually changing, and it's just nice and crisp out. Speaking of crisp, yes. we, have a, we have a visitor today. Did you know that? I saw that. I don't, I don't think there's a person talking about that. I'm not sure she's in the right place. Should we introduce him to the, I mean, do the. Well, go ahead. Okay. Um, you guys may have heard of this man. Uh, he's here today. He is. He came for one day. Well, he's here for the weekend, but he came to to just say hi, didn't you? Come here for a minute, Gus. <laughs> Let, hey, welcome Gus Beth, would you? Uh, you're, it's good to see you. You're a gift. Welcome home, my friend. And I, I think I can speak on behalf of everybody that you are a sight for eyes. That, I mean, we just love you so much, brother. Yeah. And it's good to see you. Uh, we understand that you packed a little light for the weather in Idaho for this time of year. Yeah. <laughs> and you've been getting snow up there already. Yes, yes they do. They got dusting. 21 wow. degrees and windy. Yes, there he is. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, Doug is the pastor for his place. Yeah. 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 25 years. Fantastic. Praise God. Praise God. Fantastic. Hey, we got something exciting coming up, and I was thinking about. Yeah, you have your mic on? Yeah. It's been gone so long, he's not sure how to operate that thing. Is it on now? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I heard you just fine. I don't know what the yeah, problem is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, here's what Paul says in Thessalonians. I was just thinking about this and reflecting on it. Rejoice always. Mm -hmm. Right? Yep. yep. Pray without ceasing. Yep. Amen. Give thanks in all circumstances. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah. All circumstances. All, all doesn't that mean like even when you pull them over on the side of the road, they should be smiling. <laughs> <laughs> all means all, in other words. <laughs> yeah. For this is the will of God yes. for you. Amen. Hallelujah. And you know what's Hallelujah. so powerful is in the very next very next verse, he says this: Don't quench the spirit of God. So when we're not praying, when we're not giving thanks, yep. when yep. we're not rejoicing, yep. we are stifling up, we're damming up, if you will. We're blocking the flow of the Spirit of Amen. God. Yes, we and are. this weekend, we're going to be up at Man's Camp. There's still openings there for those guys who want to come. Yeah, guys, be I'd encourage you to come. I mean, yeah, you will miss the moment. God is coming. Amen. There's going to be a special, I really believe, a special anointing of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. amen. No no doubt. Doubt. So we're no looking doubt. forward to everybody being there. Do you yeah, got some so instructions for yeah, us? Yeah, I do have a couple of things. Um, I'm told that uh, the count is at 60. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so meaning that there's still time. Right. Amen. Now, if uh, if you need a ride, um, if that is an issue, whatnot, meet at uh, North County Fellowship at 1100 hours. Yeah. Okay. If you are riding on two wheels instead of riding in four wheels. Okay. In other words, if you're on a motorcycle, um, motorcycles, motorcycles are leaving North County Fellowship at 0830. Okay. So uh, make sure you get there a little early, maybe by 8.15 or so. Right. You can gather up, and then together, um, obeying all traffic laws and everything, you're going to travel. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to travel to... Uh, That's not in Thessalonians anywhere about <laughs> obeying all traffic laws. I don't think so. 
<laughs> yes, you're going to travel together, and uh, go-kart racing is at 1100 hours uh, in, in uh, Clovis, right. 1200 Shaw Avenue. Right. So uh, does anybody need a ride? Is anybody still currently looking for a ride? Yeah. Everybody's happy? Okay, good. Well, if they're not happy, we take you behind the woodshed. All right. <laughs> so, okay, good. All right. Um, but it's gonna, yeah, it's going to be a grand time. Yeah. Good. Yeah. All right, let's pray and get this thing going, shall we? That. All right, Father in heaven, thank you for the beauty of this day. Thank you for our dear friend being here, yes. Father. Yes. A blessing. Thank you for bringing him and Doug here safely, mm -hmm. Lord. We just ask that uh, today and this weekend, the Spirit of God Amen. flood our souls as if never before. Yes. May we be overwhelmed by your grace and by your love and by your mercy. Yes. We ask this in the name of the one who has loved us before the foundation of time. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, guys, it's uh, good to be back. You got the stuff on your tables. You know what we're going to do. We're going to read the eternal breath and enjoy every moment, and then uh, we'll get back in just a few.
guys, about uh, two more minutes, we're going to get started, okay? In fact, if you'd like to get a cup of coffee or what, a donut, go ahead and do that right now, and then we'll get started. Guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Normally, I'd say you got another minute, but <laughs> all right. I want to tell you, uh, I, want, I want to, if I get your guys' attention. <laughs> Mike, you are such a gift. All right. Wow. Uh, I've been gone quite a bit of, of, of time, and uh, along the journey, when you when you go somewhere and you're re you know you are you're just who you are. We're men of God, and that's what we are. And uh, fan in the flame of people's hearts is just an absolute joy. But uh, every so often you get a little fatigued. And uh, one day I woke up. This was a two Sundays ago. I woke up at uh, where I'm up in his place in uh, Post Falls, Idaho, and I woke up and I had never been that tired in my whole life. And I remember waking up and uh, really early, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of bed, but before I do, I told the, I thought, Father, before I get out, I, I want to praise you. I'm, gonna, I'm choosing in this fatigue, I'm choosing in this fatigue joy. I'm going to choose to be joyful today. And I kept saying, I'm going to choose to be joyful today. <laughs> Because I am really tired, and I do not feel like joy. <laughs> and, but I'm choosing today. And then uh, I got, to, got the coffee. I got my wife's toothbrush ready, got the coffee ready. You know, I'm getting all this stuff. And I'm saying, Father, I'm choosing joy. I'm choosing joy. And all of a sudden, <laughs> something happened to me. I don't know how to describe it, guys. This is how that we live. This is the magnificence of Christ himself. All of a sudden, I thought, Father, I'm choosing joy. And all of a sudden, I feel like my fatigue's leaving. And so then I went, oh, this is magnificent. Let's go get in a fight. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and I thought, let's go get into a fight for the glory of your name and the souls of men. And all of a sudden, I was on a rush. And the rest of the day went fantastic. I told the church that day, and I, I thought, man, talk about impacting people. I said, listen, the magnificence of Christ, there is no one like the Lord. We are not into a belief system. We're not into a doctrinal surveys and theology. We are after God himself. And that's why I look at this. What has become of the, the natural nature? The natural nature of a man of God is God. The natural nature is the image of the Most High God. There's no one like him. And one of the things that happens with us, we've got to surrender our will. I mean, we have to surrender our will. We're fighting with ourselves all the time. We're always trying to prove ourselves. Or we're in fear. Where we're, we're always comparing ourselves out here. And you, the moment that you send, we surrender our will. Father, I just, it's all yours. I want your will. Something begins to happen. And I have to say, my wife and I, when we went up there, we were really looking, we're looking for a great blessing. And God has been kind. And we're in that, we're in a motor home up there. And, and uh, I, obviously, I did not dress for the cool weather. Uh, that, that's been an opportunity for us. But, but people have loaned me coats. <laughs> and I thought, you know, <laughs> what's really nice is just a loan because I don't need this in Paso Robles, <laughs> you know. But I wanted to give this to you today. I couldn't wait to get back because I kept thinking, all the traveling I have done and all the places I have been, I'm watching 
men of God, men of God, good men of God, living without any power, any joy, any authority. You know, when you think of the grace of God, we're going to be, we're looking at Romans 14, 17, and 18. It's one of my favorite parts of Scripture along with other parts of Romans. But I mean, it's, it's one of my favorites. So, and for the kingdom of God isn't about what, doing. It's the idea of eating and drinking is the idea. The kingdom of God is not the doing. It's not all the stuff. It's not all the studies. It's not all of that. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. When we receive the gift of God, the grace of God, what is, when you, you, you can receive the grace of God by faith. You can receive his grace in Jesus Christ. But if you don't open the gift, you're always suffering. You're in this mental fight with yourself or porno or something else or you're easily angered or easily irritated or you think less of yourself or you point out condemnation towards somebody else if you won't open the gift. It's your gift. And I, I talk about it all the time. I said, what if, you, what if someone gave you, you, you buy a beautiful gift for somebody and you give it to them, you're just thrilled, and then they never open it. <laughs> Two years later, you go back and they said, well, the wrapping was so beautiful, I didn't want to open it. I didn't want to tear it. I mean, what is that? If you don't open the gift, the first thing when you open the grace of God, the gift of God, the first thing you will experience, and I'm talking about experience, not believing, experience, is joy. The immediate of opening grace is joy. And then, and then it's beauty. It's just beauty beyond you. All of a sudden, I can remember when I opened that gift myself, and I literally walked out. I did not know this was happening to me, but I opened that gift. I was praising him. I was giving thanks for him. I can't imagine you saving a reprobate like me. Joy was right there, and the other thing was beauty. I remember that first day. I walked out, and the sun was shining, and I looked up, and I have never seen the sky so blue in my life. All of a sudden, the creation itself was, <gasps> and it was just the sky. We always see the sky. We don't even pay attention to the sky. We're so used to this blue sky out there, it's like of no value. Oh, yes, it is. I'm going to tell you what. And you begin to look at this, and I think it's the surrender of our will. And I'm always, you know, even up back up at his place, there's only about 40 people still there that knew me from when we, we started that thing. I, when we started the church, I was there for, once the church started, I was there for four years and ten months. That's all. And I was only in Post Falls for a total of five and a half years. You know, I knew it in my life it was a parenthesis. God was, I went there to buy a Harley store. And obviously, I told the Lord, I'm, I'm done with this stuff. I'm going to buy a Harley store, and I am definitely going to make disciples. Harley riders all need to be saved. <laughs> <laughs> right, Wes? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you know, but God had another plan. And I wanna, I'm going to share some stuff that you guys are so used to me, you know. I thought, but I, I've got to tell you, one of my favorite deals is about a new life. I live like this all the time. I'm, I'm thinking, Father, I want people to want you. I want people to be able to live the life that says there is no one like the Lord. Gary, that song we just sang, when you, I just want you. I'm not here for anything else. I'm not here for a blessing or nothing. I just want you. You don't have to give me anything. I'm not asking for anything but you. I want your presence. I want to experience you. You know, and I, when I was that young man and, and I was trying to figure out faith and I'm trying to figure out, Father, how do I live to know you? How do I live to know you instead of just living, just providing, just making money, uh, being a dad, a husband? I want all these things. I want, I want to live with a love that can, I want to know this joy and this love that I can give to my wife. It was my major goal because I wasn't, I've, I've never been called to the ministry. To this day, I haven't been called to the ministry. I have never been called to preach. Not one time have I ever felt like, man, I got to preach. I got to preach. Not, it's never happened to me. I wouldn't come to listen to myself anyway. I, I, I really wouldn't. But I, I have been called to God. And out of that call, I get assignments. <laughs> That's the way it works. I get an assignment. Right now, I've got an assignment up in Post Falls again. <laughs> You know, and I'll have been up there, by the time I leave, I'll have been up there just over two months. But I have an assignment, and I come back, and, and I, have, I have these things. And I look, and I said, there's no one like the Lord. And when we're opening this eternal breath, sometimes we get so used to it. When, you, when we were singing that song, Gary, that it was so beautiful when all of a sudden, it's like I can do it like it's an agenda. 
I'm doing it out of obedience. Man, we, Gary, we don't want that at all. You and I especially don't want that. I'm, I look at it and I said, I was telling Doug coming down here with me, he's never been in a band of brothers. He's a, a, a wonderful friend, a, a pastor, been up there, the pastor of that church for 20 years. He started that work with me. We started it together. And so he's been in the church for 25 years. Mike, like you've been here for 25 years. You know, and I look back and I said, but you can also, I said, no one knows what it's like being in the ministry. And I don't know what it's like to be anywhere for 25 years. I have no idea. This is the longest place I've ever been in my life because I've been here 10 years. And I'm thinking, I told Karen, I said, it's way too long. You know, I mean, way too long. But, but I look back and I'm thinking, I want to give you something. I want to I share a story with you because I don't know how to do it. People ask me this. Have you received a second blessing? I, no, I don't think so. If, is there another one coming? <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what to say about that one. Have, have you been anointed of the Lord? Has the Holy Spirit anointed you and given you gifts? Absolutely. Now, Gary wants me to get one more gift. I know that. You know? And it may happen at camp this time, Gary. I mean, amen. You know? But I look at it and I said, because everything God gives you is for purpose. It's for your joy. It's absolute your joy. But I want, it's a story I've read to you before, but I want to give it to you again today. It's, it was out of George Mueller, Bristol, and, and uh, A.T. Pearson wrote a book on George Mueller. There's been a lot written about him, but A.T. Pearson's the best book I ever read about George Mueller, Bristol. A tremendous man of faith. He believed God in every situation. He was after nothing but God. And while he was after nothing but God, God gave him everything. He went after orphans, and when he, had, when he went to do a ministry, he just had an ache in his soul for people that had nothing. Well, he had nothing. <laughs> no, that's what it looked like. He had everything. He had the presence of God on his being all the time. You read the stories about him, you walked into his presence, you walked into the presence of God. When that man prayed for you, the earth shook. You know the story about when when he was on his way in the in old age, he was on his way over to Canada to speak. And, of course, they had the steamship. They had no radar, nothing. They got fogged in. And, I, and the captain came to tell him, Mr. Mueller, we're not going to be able to get you there in time so, so that you're able to speak. And he said, what? So they went up to the room, the chart room or something. He was saying, where, where, where do you think we are? And he said, about here. He said, we can't get you there. We can't get there. There's fog. We can't get there. He said, well, the fog has no problem. He said, what does that got to do with us getting there? So he said, well, let's pray. And he says, what are you talking about? You, you can pray all you want, but the fog's still there. That's what the captain told him. He said, what do you, he said, he said, Father, thank you for removing the fog in Jesus' name. And then the captain started to pray. And the Mueller went and put his hand on the captain's shoulder and said, stop. You don't believe anything you're going to say. God doesn't want to hear you, and I sure don't. <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and the captain wrote in his, you got to read his diary. The captain wrote in his diary, he opened the door and the fog was gone. The prayer of a righteous man. The prayer of a righteous man. You've got to know who you are. We're righteous men. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. There's a fire in your soul waiting to burst forth all over the world in the magnificence of brokenness, like Randall praying for your family, the heartache your guys are in, and your beautiful wife. And I looked at this, and I'm thinking, what's happened to you? What was it, your, your niece? Your granddaughter? Oh, Yola Boley. That is, I'm so sorry. I'm going to tell you this, guys. Listen, to, this is Mueller himself, though. This is how he, this was his life experience. He goes, in an address to ministers and workers after his 90th birthday, George Mueller spoke thus of himself. I was converted in November of 1825, but I only came into the full surrender of my heart in July of 1829. Now listen to that. I was converted, and many of us have been converted, and we're trying to do all these things, and we're working and working and working, and it seems like this straining, exhausting, we're always finding ourselves tired. I'm going to tell you, in Jesus Christ, you don't have to be tired. It doesn't mean your body doesn't need sleep. It means you are not ever exhausted from the presence of God, and that's what he meant. And he goes on this way, the love of money was gone. The love of recognition, how I compared myself to other men, was gone. And it, and it goes, the love of position, how people, what title I had, was gone. The love of worldly pleasures and engagements was gone. God, and God alone, became my portion. 
Isn't that what you want? Amen? Yes. Man of God, this is what we're here for. Our world, this country is going to hell quicker than we can ever imagine. The laws we're making in this state, the things we're trying to say all over this country are immoral, they're ungodly, they're anti-everything that would be anywhere good for a society, a community, a country. They need, this world needs you. They need you out there. You need to be the light. You need to be walking out there and you're the men that when you see a smoldering wick on a man of God, you be the, the breath of God on it. You are the ones that can make a difference. You have to know that. So you begin to look at this. And then he goes this way. He goes, I wanted nothing else. And by the grace of God, this has remained and has made me a happy man, an exceedingly happy man. And it led me to care only about the things of God. And then he says, I ask affectionately, my dearly beloved brethren, have you fully surrendered your heart and your will to God? Have you? Or is there this thing or that thing which you are taken up irrespective of God himself? I read a little of the scriptures before, but I actually preferred reading other books <laughs> more than the word of God. Shame that we would go to other books over it. I don't care who writes the book. I don't care what theologian writes the book. Is there anything greater than the eternal breath of the Almighty? No, it's the only thing that's alive. The only thing I can give anybody is the Word of God. And when I give them the Word of God, whoop, and then everyone says, oh, you got the gift of evangelism. Well, I'm not sure it's a gift of evangelism, I, although a lot of people get saved. But what is that? It's the gift of God. There is no one like Him. And that's who you are. And then he goes this way. He says, I prefer another book. And then he goes, but since the time of his revelation he had made to him, himself, of himself to me, so what do you mean the revelation? Father, I've come to surrender all. You and you alone are my God. You. There's no one like you. I want to behold you. I don't care what goes on in my life. I want nothing else. I'm not asking you to give me anything. I'm not asking for long life. I'm not asking for wealth. I'm not asking for position. I'm asking for you. You do with me as pleasing in your sight because I want you. Seek his kingdom. What does it mean to seek his kingdom? It means to exercise it. It means to get into it. Ex live in the righteousness that has been already given. Live in peace. What do you mean peace? It means harmony. Well, I'll, 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 if I have time, I, don't, I won't. But, but it, it means unity. What does it cost you to forgive somebody? Nothing. It's what we are as men of God. What does it cost you to love God? Nothing. What does it cost you to esteem others as more important than yourself? Nothing. Why? You're men of God. <laughs> That's what we're here for. We are created to shake the earth one more time for the glory of the Almighty and the souls of men and women that do not know where they are. They have no... We were all there. We used to live in those things. We all lived them at one time, gratifying the natures of our sinful nature. All about us. Everything was there. And now we are, we're being absolutely awakened. Then he goes this way. He has become unspeakably blessed to me, and I can say from my heart, God is an infinitely lovely being. Oh, my beloved brethren, do not be satisfied until in your innermost soul you can say, God is an infinitely lovely being. Wow. Isn't that amazing? So what is the kingdom of God? You know, the kingdom of God... We're, we've been going through Romans for years now, absolutely years. I don't know how many years, but it's been a lot of years we've been in Romans. Amen? <laughs> I mean, you guys are Roman men. I mean, there's no doubt about that. Okay? But I look at this and I'm thinking, Father, you, all you spoke, Christ on the earth, I must go to other cities. This is the reason I was sent to preach the kingdom of God. To preach the kingdom of God. Everything you look in the book of Acts, preach the kingdom of God. Seek the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God. How are we serving? We're living in the magnificence of a new nature. We have been made into the image of God. He became sin so that we would become the righteousness of God. Christ, God made him that way. And we begin to look at this and I'm thinking, oh, Father, the kingdom of God is what we're made for. I was made for righteousness. I was made for peace. I was made for joy. And we're, and we're not opening up to it. I, I Open up and get, enjoy the journey. Praise God. Choose His will. Exercise the... You, 
you've got to be pushed. Something has to push on you so you can discover who you are. If you don't get pushed, you will never know who you are. There's a, there's a sinful nature that gets disappointed, irritated, angry, lustful, swears, does all these other things. And I said, then there's the righteousness. In the, I have been rebirthed into the image of the Almighty. I have been made blameless now and forever. Therefore, I can actually repent with great joy. See, in the kingdom of God, there are no dead things. That's what's so beautiful about it. There's, what do you mean dead things? When the Lord tells you and I that he says, do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the earth? Do you not know that? Well, yep, I think so. But then he goes and tells us what it is. Don't participate there. Be willing. Share the magnificence of who you are in Christ. There's no one like you. And so you, you go, and when, when righteousness, peace, and joy are who you are, when you're living in this, this kingdom, when these things are present, the love of God reigns without any obstacles. All of a sudden, you forget to be offended. All of a sudden, you can go up to any man, any woman that's ever hurt you, and you can be the blessing to them. That's what our world is aching for. You know, don't you wish some of our politicians could get just a glimpse of the kingdom of God? Just a glimpse? The foulness coming out of our society? It's just, that's what causes me to groan. I look at the foulness of where we are. And even churches, they've lost their first love. You know, the church at Ephesus, I love the book of Ephesians. Every time we start, we've started four works in our life, God has sent me on four different assignments to start works. And every time I started, we start in Ephesians. So I preached Ephesians four times in my life. And yet, you get into Revelation, what does he say? Right off the get-go to the church at Ephesus. 30 years later, you know, he's down there. What does he say to him? Man, you do this good, and you do this good, and man, your labor's good, and your labor's good, and your labor. Man, you guys are workaholics. Man, you're handling this, and you do this. And he's, he's compliment, compliment. But I have this against you. What is that? You've lost your first love. The love of God. The love of God. Oh, may we surrender our will so that the love of God ref transforms the way I process my life so that I can prove what the will of God is. What is it? Righteous peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And then let's just go shake the earth. Amen? Yeah. That's what we do. Gary, you're going to come up and lead us in a song? Amen. Yeah.